let, let's talk about the uh, the retail adoption, right? In terms of uh, there's a lot of technologists in the space that are uh, fairly deep in the weeds, right? When it comes to uh, how does the tech work, you know, where can we solve some of the scalability issues, etc. And I think that uh, they probably are not thinking as much about how do you drive adoption of that mass consumer, right? I think you mentioned that there's can be some uh, financial products and things like ETFs that that could potentially help um, you know open those uh, gates um, to, to crypto. What has to happen on the UX side to make it easier for uh, kind of that mass consumer to not use a retail financial product like, you know, an ETF, et cetera, but still get much easier access to buying, holding and transacting Bitcoin? Yeah. So I I think a lot of that UX actually does exist uh, in in really good ways. I think uh, Coinbase, you know, despite a lot of their foibles, has done a pretty good job of it. I think Square has done an amazing job. I actually think Square has now the best experience for using and working with Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that the um, a lot of the, you know, when, when people say uh, we need more user adoption or, or growth, um, they're often focused on the usability of products that interface with, uh, you know, with cryptocurrencies. Um, and I actually think that that's not the sort of main uh, bottleneck. Um, I think that the harder problem is actually, um, you know, shifting the narrative, right? It's explaining uh, and educating investors, whether they're institutional, whether they're retail, on uh, what the merits of uh, a non-sovereign money system could be, Mm -hmm. right? And I think from there, branching into and exploring, um, you know, well, what are other forms of money that could exist besides uh, crypto money that could exist besides Bitcoin, um, what is the path to monetization of something like Ether, et cetera. But it's, uh, I think all of that is grounded in an education campaign more than an actual uh, usability exercise. I think what we've seen in the past, especially in the last retail run-up, is that a lot of the emphasis was around um, retail investors trying to seize uh, what I'll describe as the next Bitcoin, which mm-hmm. I, I find is is pretty misguided effort. You know, But we saw Ripple run-up substantially. We saw... Um, you know, EOS and Ether run up substantially. Um, and I, I think what was couched, and we saw um, Cardano run up substantially, especially in Asian markets where um, it has, you know, very broad based appeal. I think that all of these users are looking for uh, something that is better, faster, cheaper, um, has higher transaction throughput, et cetera, than Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that that's what's driving a lot of retail interest is because they think that they can capture something that is meaningfully better than Bitcoin on those axes. Um, and I think that that approach is actually totally misguided. I, I don't think it makes much sense. Um, I think that uh, what that reflects to me is actually that users don't understand the value proposition of Bitcoin. Right. They might be buying Bitcoin. They might be holding Bitcoin. Uh, they might even be using Bitcoin. But I think that that education campaign is kind of the first place to start is is teaching uh, all investors, institutional or retail, uh, what the value propositions of Bitcoin are, what the history uh, behind cryptocurrencies is, um, and kind of where, uh, you know, sort of value can, can accrue and, and be captured long term. 